like to talk to you this morning about seven things that will happen to us in the resurrection. Seven changes that will take place in our mortal body. First of all, there is going to be a change of dimension. Paul says there are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. So also is the resurrection. When you get your resurrection body, you're going to be able to move around the universe, not at the speed of light, but at the speed of thought. You remember the evangelist Philip was called away from a tremendous revival that had broken out in Samaria and was sent down into the backside of the desert to meet a man from Ethiopia heading back home. And you remember how Philip joined himself to his chariot and came on uh, onto the chariot and led the man to Christ and taught him the truth of believers' baptism. They saw an oasis in the desert and uh, uh, they stopped the chariot and the, the pair of them went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. And I see that man from Ethiopia as he comes up out of the water. He's rubbing the water out of his eyes. And he turns to say something to Philip, but Philip was not there. I can see him, can't you? He, he says to the, 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 the fellow who was driving his chariot, where's that preacher fellow? I don't know, sir, he said. He is uh, here just a minute ago. Well, find him. I want to talk to him. Yes, sir. I looked under the chariot. <laughs> Climbed up and looked all around. No sign of him. It simply wasn't there. It was there half a minute ago. Gone. It says that the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. And he uses the same word, by the way, that he uses to describe the rapture. He caught away Philip. And I couldn't find him because he was 20 or 30 miles away on the coastline of Palestine, heading north to the Roman capital of Caesarea. One minute he was there, next minute he was gone. We're going to be able to do that kind of thing one of these days. Are we going to have a body like unto his glorious body? And then there is going to be a change of destiny. The apostle says that the body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. Right now, you see, we have bodies which are destined for the grave. Not much we can do about it. In fact, there's nothing we can do about it. One day we're going to have bodies that are destined for the glory. A body destined for the grave changed to a body that's destined for the glory. But then there's going to be a change of dress. Paul tells us that the, the body is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. Whenever I think about that, I think about the caterpillar. Lowly little creature. And I can see this little caterpillar, he lives out his life as a grub, earth, earthbound, circumscribed, crawling in the dust. And I can see him as he lifts his head and looks upward to the sky. I know exactly what the little fellow's thinking to himself. He's saying to himself, I wish I could fly. And then he feels a strange moving and a change and an un unheard voice rings through his being and he emerges out of his little coffin and he's been changed he goes in a caterpillar but he comes out a butterfly it spreads its wings it soars upwards to the sky in a blaze of color and beauty it was sown in dishonor it was raised in glory. Now, my friend, let me tell you this, that the God who can do that for a caterpillar can surely do it for a Christian.
going to be a change of dress. Then there's going to be a change of disposition. It's sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Sown in weakness. Raised in power. One of these days, we're going to have a body of power. A body that will never grow old, that will never get tired, that will never be ill, that will never yield to lust, that will never stumble or fall. A body of power, like unto his glorious body. Now, I know, of course, that the angels of God can never be jealous. It is not in their nature to be jealous. But if it could be possible for an angel to be jealous, I know what they'd be jealous of. There you go, walking down Hallelujah Highway, around by Beulah Boulevard, on your way back home and you walk right past Michael and Gabriel and they see you go walking by and as you disappear around the corner Gabriel turns to Michael and he says I say Mike I wish I had a body like his <laughs> It's just like his. Change of disposition. Sown in weakness, raised in power. And Paul says it is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body, a change of dynamics. And then there will be a change of durability. Paul says that this mortal must put on immortality. Having given us a body and a soul, he could have locked us into a behavior pattern, you see, as he did an animal. And we could have been so locked into a behavior pattern that we would always do those things that please the Father, because that's the way we were made. We were made to do that kind of thing. But God didn't do that. I, I, it seems to me if God had done that, he wouldn't have had people. He'd have had puppets. And he didn't want puppets. He wanted people. So he gave us a body and he gave us a soul. And then instead of locking us into a behavior pattern, he gave us something he didn't give to an animal. He gave us a spirit. And the whole genius behind the, the, the creation of man in the image and likeness of God was simply this, that man was made to be inhabited by God. And the whole idea was that the, the Holy Spirit would come and inhabit the human spirit. And the human spirit would work in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit and the human spirit working in close harmony together would control the thoughts, the emotions, and the will. And by being in communion with the Holy Spirit, indwelling the human spirit, we would always do those things that please the Father. And then sin entered. Man in sin is not what God intended at all. Man in sin has a body, he has a soul, but he has a spirit vacant, no indwelling Holy Spirit. It means he's lost, you see, lost. Some, some, sometimes people control their lives through their intellect. Sometimes they control their lives through their emotions. Sometimes they control their lives through their wills. Sometimes they control their lives through their senses. Or sometimes it's this, partly this, and partly that, or now this, now that. But they're lost. 
That's why Jesus said to Nicodemus, ye must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. You've been born all wrong the first time. You need to be born again. And the genius of the gospel is simply this. When a person comes to Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses him from all sin. And the Holy Spirit comes back into the human spirit. And you begin a life of cooperation, the human spirit and the Holy Spirit controlling the intellect, the emotions, the will, the senses, so that stumblingly at first, but with ever improving step, we walk with God. There's one flaw, however, in that process. We still have these old bodies of ours, and they let us down. Body's not yet been redeemed, Paul says, but will be. And when Jesus comes, the body, the soul, the spirit. We will be man, woman, boy, girl, but just as God intended us to be. Father, we remember the words of John Nelson Darby when he said, is it so? I shall be like thy son. Is this the grace that he for me has won? Father of glory, thought beyond all thought, in glory to his own likeness brought. We thank you in Jesus' name.